Good morning, and here we are, day two at the uh, pool pump room job. As you can see, this is how far we've got. Um, probably you remember from the last video. Uh, today's work is making off all the armors, putting the um, RCBOs in the board. I need to put a light up on the wall um, and with a switch. And what else are we gonna do? And potentially put an outside switch up ready for doing the outside lights. The client um, was supposed to have bought the lights and he hasn't, so <laughs> there's not really a lot I can do there, but I wanna try and put something on the uh, armoured if I can. So hopefully, fingers crossed, if we've got enough time, all those jobs will be done today. So let's get into it, shall we? As you can see, what we've done here so far is I've stripped all of the cables back so they're all ready to connect in. This one should be the main feed into the board. <clears throat> so what I want to do is go to um, the mains cupboard, find this particular cable, disconnect it from the board. We'll put a link in and then we'll do a little bit of testing to make sure to verify the cable is that cable, plus do cut the test to make sure the cable hasn't got any faults on it. Shouldn't have because um, I've done all the tests beforehand, but it just it will give you guys a bit of a um, insight into what we need to do to verify cables and stuff. So let's go into the mains cupboard and see what's going on in there. Here we are inside the mains cupboard. There's the actual mains um, coming in up there and the original fuse board this is a board that I put on last year because I was having a car charger installed um, and I wanted to put some of this stuff on to um, a better board effectively it needed to be remade off and stuff but that's a long that's a different story anyway so this board down here that's the cover. So if we have a look in there, you can see that you've got the stable supply, the pool, plant room, and then the car charger. So the second one along should have been the pool room. I've taken, um, as you can see, that's switched off. Number two, I've taken all of the ends out and I've put a link between the live and the earth so that we can then go back into the pool plant room and um, check that we've got continuity there and then we'll come back in, we'll put it from live to neutral and we'll check that we've got a, a continuity there, make sure there's no breaks in the cable. And one thing I wanted to point out, which really gets my goat, is I've put a nice new Hager board in with SPD protection and everything, make it all look nice. And then the car charging guy come in, look, and put a non, it's not the same. It should be Hager, and he's just put some old rubbish that he's managed to find on the van in there, which is against regulation straight away. So it's beyond belief, isn't it? But anyway, let's crack on. Let's go back there and we'll do a bit of testing and see what results we get. So, here we are, back in the pool plant room. So, as you can see, this is the cable. I've now put one end of my test um, leads onto the earth, and then I'll put my other one onto the live and I'll press the button and we should hear that noise to say there is continuity and then if I oh, show you that 0.32 is that yeah 0.32 of an ohm so that's showing me that I've got continuity to between these two so what we'll do now is we'll go back I'll put I'll swap it to the neutral and live and neutral, come back in here and retest it to make sure that I've got continuity on the neutral as well. And then um, I've got to do a little bit of insulation resistance testing. And then we should be all right to put that one away. Okay, so let's go and do that. So here we go. <clears throat> what I've now done is I've swapped it over in the main so now the link that i had in there goes between the live and the neutral so we do the same tests that we've done before wait for my tester to switch on 
and we test that trigger. There we go. <coughs> and let me show you that. 0 0.3 ohms. So that's showing me again, we've got continuity. So all I've got left now is I do a little bit of insulation resistance testing on the cable, which means I need to take the link off. Um, <coughs> and then once they're done, we can put the cable away. And all the rest of them, we'll do the same thing for each cable. Um, I won't bore you with showing you the same thing repetitively over and over again. And then I'll come back when potentially we've got some of the um, RCBOs put in the board. All right, see you guys soon. So now what I thought I'd show you would be the insulation resistance testing of the cable. So what we do on the meter here, I put it round to insulation. So it's saying it's an insulation resistance test. I've got my voltage set at, can you see that? 500 volts. <clears throat> and then we go to this, I've got it on the earth and we go to live, press the button. Let it do its thing. And on that one, we're getting 500 mega ohms, perfect. And then we go on to the neutral. And then we've got 500 mega ohms. And then we'll do live to neutral, just to check. And again, 500 mega ohms. So this tester, what it does is it actually pushes 500 volts through the circuit and it lets you know whether the insulation the the colored bits of the cable that is the insulation if any of that insulation is degraded so if it had degraded <clears throat> then you get a lower reading what you want is to get 500 um but if this is if there's dampness in the cable or if it's degraded in any way you get a lower reading and sometimes you can get um, a dead short um, and that's what a lot of electrical faults are. So that gives you a little bit of an indication on the health of the cable. So this is why a lot of electricians, when they're, um, if you want a new fuse ball put in, they will go, they will say to you, I need to do the testing because without putting the tester on the cable, just looking at it won't tell you whether the cable's in good condition or not. It's actually putting a test through it. And once you've put the test voltage through it, if it all comes back good, then fair enough, we'll stick a new um, fuse board on. But without doing those tests, how could you ever know that the cable is in good condition? It's just impossible to tell. So that's why we do a lot of testing. It's to prove that the cables that you're gonna be putting something new onto or adding onto are in good condition to be able to add onto or to be able to put a new fuse board on. So anyway, I am gonna um, start putting the stuff away in the board and I'll come back to you once we've got a few of the circuits put away. Right, see you soon. Here we go, so this is now the majority of the armoureds that I had already um, coming up into the board. This is actually for, as you can see, let's see if it says that light in pool. So there's a light that's actually in the swimming pool and it needs to be low voltage. So that is for the pool guy to connect in and I think he's gonna put some sort of like the transformer over here so we can come out of this board off the side. I needed to leave a lot of room for him because I'm not actually too sure what stuff he needs to put in. So I was trying to leave him as much room as possible. So um, as you can see as well, I've now added this. This is the earth that's gonna be for an earth stake. So this is a TT system. Well, the whole house is on the TT um, and I'm just gonna add to the TT by sticking another earth stake in. Um, and then my next job after I've done earth state will be to try and put some lighting in here So we're going to put a strip light up here and probably a switch over here somewhere But I won't know exactly where until um, we start doing the job So yeah stick with me and uh, come and see about putting an earth stake in maybe Here we are around the um, back corner of the shed What I've done is this is my little the bottom of the earth box there um, and this is the earth clamp that's going to go on and the earth rod and what I like to do generally especially if it's this type of clamp is I'll put that on first so that when I've hit it continuously at the top to get it in the floor the the end this end let me show you the end this end has a tendency to round over and then you can't get 
that clamp on. So if you don't put it on first, you just curse yourself for not doing it. So I've learned over the years, put that on first. Um, so yeah, I, I normally I hate putting rods in because of the fact you never know what's going to be under the ground. But where we are is reasonably rural. In fact, it's quite very rural. Um, and there's no toilets anywhere this end of the building. The mains is the other end of the building. So there's nothing down here that you can hit. So we should be fine. Um, but it's always something every time you want in to drive an earth stake in, you're worrying that you're going to hit something that you don't want to be hitting. And obviously, generally speaking, especially if it's an electrical cable that you might hit, you're holding on to a copper rod so it can be a little bit frightening when you're hammering in an earth stake but this one should be all right so um let's get it in position and get it all um, connected up shall we let's go show you this quickly um, this is what we would call a crimp and this is a crimper so this one effectively as you can see it's got what we call there's a die in there and they're all different sizes so it tells you on there that you can see that's 10 mil the next one rounds 35 um, <clears throat> and you've got six and oh, let me show you let's turn it around that way that's 20, that's a six, see? So you just spin that where you want it to be. I'm obviously using a 10 mil cable. So it tells you, I don't know if you can see it on there. It's not gonna be in focus, is it? It actually tells you on there what size crimp it is, which is really handy if you're coming along as you don't know what size the cable is, because it's quite hard to tell with a lot of cables once they're uh, single cables like this what size it actually is to have it written on the crimp is great because then it actually tells you what size it is um, Yeah, so I thought I'd show you that because really a lot of people what they would do is strip this cable back and then just tie it around this and you just don't get a very good connection whereas this is solid it's a really good connection so you get a far better so if you had a really good earth reading off your rod and then you had a really rubbish connection to the earth rod then you're gonna get a rubbish earth reading back at the board whereas if everything is as good as you can possibly make it then the chances of you getting a good earth reading are multiplied exponentially really aren't they um so yeah that's what we try to do i thought i'd let you to see that and hopefully it's uh interesting to someone All right let's crack on and get this thing finished welcome back everyone so this is going to be the next job i've already mounted the light that's where i'm going to put the light so it's kind of out of the way. Um, and then I'm gonna probably put the switch over here, I think, because it's the easiest place how the door opens. So what my plan is, is to come out of the board in one of these, come up to something like that, and then I can follow the wood down and then straight into the light, and also come across along here and then down by the door, there. So that's gonna be my next job to start setting all this lot out, really. Um, normally what I would do in a shed, or this kind of structure anyway, is that I would just put conduit up to the high level. But because the roof is so low, because then I would normally just clip it and then into the fittings or whatever, because I only try to protect it where it's likely to get damaged. Um, but as this is so low, I think it's the possibility of getting damaged pretty much everywhere you look. So hence why it's all going to be in conduit. So um, I'll set the camera up so you can watch me struggle on doing it. <laughs> okay, let's get into it.
Okay, I thought I would share this with you. Um, you obviously saw me, well, depending on how much you was paying attention, you saw me wiring this. So the switch is now on there. And you can see, um, going up in the conduit and then coming over to the light. So I thought I'd explain how it's wired to give you a bit of a an insight in our wiring systems. So we've wired this, or I have wired this two plate, which effectively means that I've taken the lives to the switch instead of the light fitting. So um, at that light, we've got a neutral, an earth, and a switched live. So you do have the three cables, but that's not a permanent live. It's only a switched live because it goes effectively, it goes through the switch. So let's follow the route. This is the beginning. So the live, we'll only follow the live because it makes it easier. That is a permanent live. Once this circuit is energized, that is permanently live unless this is switched off. So you turn that on, it makes, it comes up here. And then as you can see, it goes straight this way. So it goes around there, follows this, comes down the conduit, and then it comes in to the top of the switch. And if you look at the top of the switch, it actually says common and the reason we call that common is because it's common throughout the circuit so it means it's live that will always be a permanent live in the common well it should be pretty much anyway most of the time and then obviously that this switch then breaks that switch live so if the switch is switched off there's no power going through the switch so it stops here so as soon as you switch that switch on bang it then makes a contact between this top the top one here and the bottom one here which then is your switched live so then that goes back up the conduit along back through that box comes down there along here and then it goes to here so that is your switched live because it goes through the switch. I hope that makes sense. Um, and yeah, and that's one of the ways that we would generally wire things, just to give you a little bit of a heads up. Hopefully that's been helpful for someone.